home. I see myself at home. I'm home. Cushy catfish in here. I'm back again. I've been away. I was impounded for a while. That's what be put away. Get my head right. Because I, I backslided. You ever been backslided? That's the bad. It makes you not sure who you are. I know. I'm a coach catfish. So I got my mind back. I tell you about the story. Because I ain't done made it yet. But I tell you how it goes. I backslid. Ah! That's a close call. Anyway, that happened again. I still got my shield. So if it fall off my head again, I grab my shield, shield myself. Cause I done backslided. We can't have no more reversals. I done backslided with the CRT. Now I'll tell you what happened here in a minute. First, I want to explain the new, the new brain shield. This is my flying un hat. That's what I call it. See, I was an old man. I grew up back in the day when this lady, she she had on a nun hat. I think it was before she got pictures. She was a nun. Anyway, she wear that thing, put it on her head, and next thing I know, she flying. So I knew there had to be some magic and put that on your head. In fact, I think it probably had Y in it. That's why she flew. I tried to flutter, but that's about all I can butter. Anyway, Coach Catfish want to get back to what happened. You see, when you get too close to the enemy, sometimes you start having them munching, munching housing effects going on. No, it's not the munching housing effect. That's something else. That's when, like, your mama or grandma goes and say, Doctor, that boy sit. Do something for him. And then she feel all good. Feel all good because she got you on drugs and she can control you now. That's the munching hazard of that. I guess what I was trying to talk about was, like, when you take a hostage. And before you know it, the hostage wants to be your friend. The hostage might even want to marry you or something. Something crazy, even though the hostage know you might do something bad in the end. It's a psychological issue. I want my hat flying off. Anyway, down my Shally Fields hat. Remember? The flying un. Anyway, get back to my story. When you start getting too close to the enemy, sometimes the enemy will get to you, the enemy. And before you know it, these people be singing the Kumbaya. And I ain't talking about the Bayou Kumbaya. I'm talking about the I'm not sure what that means. Uh, the other kind of kumbaya. And before you know it, you be putting your arms around them old CRTs. And you be drinking that Mocking David. And I can't be Mocking David. I'm the coach of catfish. After all, I know cover. Anyway, I made a snake. I snuggled up. With that coach cat, that, no, 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 not the coach catfish, with that, with that coach of CRT, the one I showed you that I almost did in. I felt so bad about what I did to him, shocking him that way, that I would go around and just check, just check on him, just to see if the programming was going okay. Maybe, maybe bring his lizard to him. I think I need to do that today. Oh. I'll keep that little sucker over over here. Oh, they're dangerous. I got too close to the CRT. I tried to befriend him. Or it. I don't know what it was. With all that wine and stuff, you can't tell one of them from another. Anyway, I got too friendly. And apparently, that 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 CRT was getting friendly with me. And boy, I knew it. 
he had his cord wrapped around my leg. And for some reason, he's trying to yank me and drag me down into that hole I showed you, where they go and sleep and hide. And then I woke up. I didn't know who I was. They done ripped off my tinfoil, exposed my brain to the CRT EMF. And they just wasn't good. I slipped off from there. And the next thing I know, I was comatose. Comatose, I say. That's putting butter on me. That's gonna eat me. Feed me to the lizards. Them lizards was hungry too. You know, CRTs, they just can't get out and go get the food like they used to. Anyway, that's what I did. But then, my CRT, my CRT, the one I tamed. Oh, I got them twin ups. Yes, got tame. It made me think. When I say a word, and it goes in this ear and come out here, a lot of times they had nothing to do with the other. So I turned. The one I turned. Not to turn them up. Stupid. The flying. But in the battle, it lost its wings. It lost its wings like the angel that lost the wing. Anyway, he found me. I don't know how he found me. I think he's stalking me. He's worried about me. Because I come home with, 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 with these little things stuck in my face and stuck in my head. And, 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 and talking about waves. They only come in two in waves. I think he understood what had happened. Oh, by you boy, Coach Catfish, that went too far in befriending the CRT. And it had an effect on me. So I had to go away for a while. And get detoxed from all that... That that, that 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 negative C stuff would it be sticking out and and I'd like an antenna. And Coach Catfish don't play nobody's tune but his own and you know that. Anyway, after spending a few months out in the bayou, hiding up one of them cypress trees, there where they make that split, you know, you know how they do that. It stuck me up in there, chained me down, and made me decompress. Or something like that. I don't know what it was. They brought me gruel and, and, and some kind of weird little moving things and I ate them. And after a while, I started feeling like myself. I started feeling like myself. So I got back on the research and this is what I come up with in my new way. And I'm thinking at some point, I'm gonna do like that unknown and just, just flutter off somewhere. But it keeps them away from my brain. It keeps them old CRTs out. You ain't gonna get me, CRT. I'm headed to Dubai you. Go run me some of them trotting lines. I'm gonna bait them up with some turn them ups. See what I catch. Anyway, maybe I catch a real kosher catfish. Keep watching. This story ain't finished, I'm afraid. Are you? Coach Kevish, coming here to you. Trying to get my lighting. Right. Maybe that's better. No, no. Looks like I'm wearing a welding helmet. And since Coach Kevish wells them all undone, I just have to hold on to it. Now I'm here to tell you a story. A story from way back. Way back when I was a little boy. But it went all the way up to when I was a man and I had a hand. Anyway, what it was, this little 
Bayou fishing story. And it started when I was a little boy. I was a little bitty boy. Well, not that little. You know, nine, ten years old. I was almost a man by that time. Anyway, here how it went. He's with my girl cousin. My girl cousin. I lived in a yard. I was almost like the yard dog. But I wasn't a complete dog. I didn't scratch the fleas. But I did watch over what was necessary. Like a garden dog. Not a garden dog like my garden cat. A garden dog. Arr, show you my teeth and what's left of them. I used to have a whole mouthful. Back in the day, when I was garden, I guess you see the name. I can't say it. Nam Zatfar Iraq. Nam Zatfar Iraq. I guess that's what I got on my head. But it seemed to keep them CRT out. That's why I'm going to tell you the old story. Because I think I'm picking up on some of the old stuff. I'm having trouble when they cut my throat and stuff I can't swallow right so I have to do that kind of stuff you can't see my hand I have to do that kind of stuff anyway this is how it went me and my little girl cousin we grew up it wasn't her fault we grew up in the same yard I was a yard dog and I didn't know nobody, and it was bad, and my girl cousin was kind to me, she's like my sister, but not my sister, and one day, I come and say, girl cousin, you can marry me, she's like, you're crazy, you're nine years old, I'm, I'm 12, and I was like, well, will you wait for me, will you wait for me, her mama comes to the door and say, Boy, go home. You insane. What you doing? You nine years old. Go do something else. So that's what I did for many years. And then, I'm going to have to hold this with both. Because I can't hold my shoulders. I can't, I can't hold all that stuff. It just ain't right. But I think the story is worth telling. Yeah, it do that when I go, eh. It helps so I can't focus. Because I don't have the hocus pocus. Anyway, once I got old, way up in there, old, me and my cousin, we continued to be friends. And we went fishing. We went fishing on the bayou, because she's a bayou girl. She had a houseboat. Her man had a houseboat. Anyway, the houseboat was cool. It's a double-decker. It's like uh, a four-bedroom apartment in the city, but it's on the water. And you just can't beat that. We went to some of them couchon delays. All them kind of stuff. Back in the bayou. That hurts my head. Ah. Anyway. One day. I got out of class. My cousin say. Come up here boy. We can go fishing. My cousin. She's like a tomboy. But she's very much a girl. Very much a lady. She had her own boat. Or at least it's somebody's boat. Her man's boat. But she drove it. I didn't. Anyway, we went out on the river. And we got out there. And we was doing good. We was up in the backwater. You know how the backwater is. You got lots of trees, lots of bushes. And you just all up in them trees and bushes. And it was in the spring. Well, the springtime is when them cotton mouths. Ah! Ah! My mouth ain't white. Anyway, they open something. Ah! It'd be cotton mouth. And them suckers is aggressive. And I say, girl cousin, watch this. I used to could take my, 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 my pole, which I didn't use a pole. I used a spin cast. And I'd throw that sucker, eat, and knock it off a tree, bump it off a tree. You know, we'd go down there and catch a fish, because that's where they hang out. Because in Louisiana, our trees is on the water. And they got roots and they got stuff. And the fish hangs out. So you bump it off there and a pew, and you'll catch your fish. 
and that's what I like. But that day, it was in the spring again, and them cottonmouths was out. They like to mate in that time of year. And I say, go cousin, watch this. I'm gonna hit that snake. That snake was way out there. I go, tee ting. He hit by him. He put his head up. That's a snake putting his head up. And I was like, oh no. So I say, watch this, go cousin. I do it again. I hit that sucker. I go, tee ting, boom. And it hit him on the head. He saw me do it. That sucker started coming toward the boat. Shh, the way they do. If you're from Louisiana, you know they go. Shh, and before I knew it, he's trying to get in the boat because he's gonna get me as aggressive. You think they're stupid? Them suckers ain't stupid. So what I had to do was grab the paddle and try to beat that sucker to death, just to keep from getting snake bit. Now I broke that on myself. And I brought that on my girl cousin. It was taking me out to enjoy a day of fishing. After my eyes, I can't, I just can't, I can't get used to my eyes not looking at you. A hard day in physics class and whatever the hell I was doing. And I tried to bring pain and anger and the serpent <coughs> up on us. I beat that sucker. He go in the water, psh, psh, and I go boom, boom, and he finally, finally, he didn't come back up. But the moral of that story is if you throwing your baits out to hit the serpent, that serpent's going to come and bite your ass. It might bite everybody around it, and it ain't their fault, but use a, uh, 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 use an idiot. Do something that stupid. But I did it. That's how I got my name. I was stupid. But I'm I'm recoiling. Or, or there's a word that means you're getting better. And that's what I'm working at. That's why I got the Nam Zafa Ark. Heshilon. And I took it off the cranium of a lawnmower. You see, the sun shine through my brain. Anyway, don't be throwing shit at snakes. If they can see you, because they come and bite you. Hallelujah. Coach Catfish is on. Now, I've been told that because my, my, my supreme range of, of, of vocal expressions is such that it is, without having a proper microphone, nobody can hear what I've been saying because I have to be talking up here. That's just the way we do in the bayou. We just talk up there. Sometimes. Sometimes. If you like me, that's what you do. It's just uh, that's one of the things I do. Anyway. So, I'm going to try to control my voice down to where, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I had to deal with the same old stuff. But we try to get past that, okay? I have to go, uh, uh, a couple of times. You can write bad mail. I don't care. It don't affect me. It don't affect me. I still have to breathe. Anyway, what we're talking about today is I was asked, I was asked, I think it was like an opinion sheet. They sat me down. They start asking, um, so you are kosher catfish? Yeah. Can't you see me? Don't you know who I am? Well, that's what they, that's what they say. I got my name right anyway. And then they start asking me other questions. And they said, this is, this is a little test. I didn't understand I was going in for a test, but that's what 
you know, that's what they say it was. It's just a test. And uh, some of them tests, they ask you questions. And you write stuff, and you fill in little ovals. You do all that kind of stuff. And that just goes along with the whole little charade and shenanigans that these people be pulling on you. They pull it on me. Officially. Anyway, this is what happened. The woman say, why, she, what she did, she, she, she held up here. She say, Mr. Kotefish. Oh, I'm trying to be careful with my fingers. It was this, this thing. So it looked like this. This is all on this sheet of paper. It looked like that. She say, what do you see, Coach Catfish? I say, I see a bat. I like bats. It looked like a bat. Anyway, then she showed me another one. It did this. I say, there's a bat hanging upside down. Well, apparently that didn't work too well, and uh, I don't quite know where that went. But then, that was, anyway, that was one contest that they asked me about. I just, it, to me, everything just looked like a bat, because I like a bats. Bats bite you. Ah! They got more teeth than me. But they bite and suck out the blood and just live off your blood. No, bats don't do that. That's just, that's just in the movie bats and then small bats. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. It's about the questions. The questions that these people ask you, and they think you as a fool. They think you cannot answer the questions that they be asking you. I'm not sure how it went, but this is what it was. This is what it was. She say, Miss Go Catfish, we gotta ask you a question. This is about supposing. This is about the amosing of the world. She sort of talking like that because she's a lady, you see. Anyway, I'm trying to keep my, my voice down where the type of stuff doesn't get in because you can't hit. And this is very painful to talk about. It really is. Very painful to talk about. Anyway, here it was. The question. She say, Mr. Coach Catfish, what'd she say? Oh, 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 it's about the stones. The stones. Now, I didn't really understand what she was saying, but I just went with it. And it was... Let's go scapish. A rolling a stone gathers no moss. I had to go up there because there's a lady voice say, gathers no moss. I don't know if she realized the state we're in, we got rocks with moss all over the place. All over the place. And she asked a man like me, who goes out into the country, about a rolling a stone without moss. What happens when it doesn't happen? Well, oh, Puskat, I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to talk right now. Anyway, I want to get my line on. My line on. I didn't mean to go up. I didn't go, go up in my tangent. I wanted to get the loan on about the stones. Number one, I told her, because I dealt with this before, i leave my stones alone. Uh, you official person. Anyway. That's not exactly all I told her. I took words from somewhere else about the uh, stones. Kosha Catfish thought about the stones. I used to be good at throwing rocks. Uh, Ernest T. Bass. <laughs> Remember that? Ernest T. Bass. He could throw a rock. He liked to throw rocks through winters and throw rocks and do all kinds of stuff. He's probably not a, not a particularly good guy, but he could throw some rocks. Anyway, the Ernest T. Bass of... Where, where was I? Oh, 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 to rolling a stone. It seemed like I'd be rolling along somewhere. A little too fast. Oh, I, I'm sorry. A little too fast. Anyway, a rolling a stone a gathers no moss. And all I could think of was a rolling stones. The rolling stones. They don't gather no moss because they don't ever sit down and let anything happen to them or around them. They don't sit long enough for someone to come around and sit on them and use them for whatever is necessary for a stone. So a non-rolling stone experiences things. Now that's not to say that the stone can't roll now and then. Stuff happens around, it turns the stone over. The wind, the air, the weather, the earthquakes, all kinds of shit may happen and turn the stone over. And then it has an opportunity to grow some moss of somewhere else. And what I call the moss, what I call the moss, I don't think I wrote it down. Oh, 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 the moss is 
is the soul money. The moss is the soul money. When you sit there and you gather some moss, then that moss is there to help and protect and, and, and do for something else. And the moss actually breaks down the rock. So if you're sitting somewhere and doing some kindness somewhere, that means you've been broke down. You've been broke down the right way, the way a rock has to be. Which led me to something altogether different. But it's sort of the same. And it had to do with the stones. We're supposed to be unhewn stones. An unhewn stone is just another word for a rock. Sometimes an unhewn stone has just got facets and gassets. And it's just here and it's just there. And it's just not a perfect thing. It's not a perfect thing. We're supposed to be unhewn stones. Because when a master starts working on a stone, you better be sure who your master is. Your stone just end up looking like a brick. Where's something around here? I didn't have my prop set up. I should have had a brick, a brick, a brick. Ah, this will work. You get the wrong master. And you look like this. And there's millions and billions of things that look just like this. Because they all got the same master. Master, I father say, you're not supposed to be cut by the hand of man. How many things do we have out here that cuts, that cuts the stone? If you're a stone and you're getting hewn down, you need to know who's a hewning on you. Now, CRT, first time I say this today, you see the antenna way. CRT, come in and it cut the stone, cut the stone, it cuts it straight, it cuts it like men like to have stones, so they can stack them up, stack them up, take them in, and throw them. They're all the same size. They use them in their machinery. They live in them. They turn them into their houses. The stones that ain't they owns. You're supposed to be the unhewn stones. Do you always say, I want my stones? You, you the stone. You go get yourself hewn, you better be careful. Because when something gets hewn by man, Yahweh has a way of just taking it and breaking it off, breaking it in half, and sending something else. And then you got to learn not to go and be hewn by the hand of the man. See this here? This here? It's a stupidity. Necessary. But of course, you catfish. You keep the CRT out long enough so I can talk this way and give you the messages. Just a vestige of the message. It's just a part. But that's a start. So a rolling stone is just rolling, just doing brownie motion, bumping in there, bumping in there, uh, getting broke because he just said roll in there and, and breaking and creating more stones up on some other little gallstone. And that's what you end up with, just a rolling ass stone, and he just goes around and breaking and breaking and breaking. But if the stone stop, stop for a minute and be useful. Be there to be set on. Be there to be slept on. Be there to be a pillar under the head of Jacob. A pillar under the head of the Jacob. I bet that stone had a lot of moss. That's why he laid on it. It was soft to his head. If that stone had been rolling and rolling and rolling, there wouldn't have been no moss. He'd have had what you got today. A pillar that ain't soft. So stop the rolling. Look in and look out. Look to the love. Look to the prayers. Look to the hopes and the dreams. But to keep doing what you're doing, you just, just, yeah. 
What's that word? The perclimped. Makes me perclimped. Don't even know how to put it in words. It's almost like that other thing. And a, and a goon. Well, you just, you're so happy, you just, you just, the sun comes out. And you dance around. The goon. But don't be a goon. Anyway. That's all I have to say. It's about the stones. Leave them alone. If you're just rolling all the time, you're not taking enough time to be in one place to affect and make change. But when you make change, don't make it with, with the anger. Make it with the heart, the heart of flesh. Hallelujah. Start your new year off right. I am. I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful day. It's just cold. I can't even feel my hand. It's a good thing they didn't they didn't, they didn't freeze that way. Uh Coach Catfish here. I'm coming to you with no, no spherical skull cap. No time not. Nothing to keep them rays out. Because I want to talk to you through the waves. Through the waves. Things that misbehaves through the waves. What it is, it's about the death, the death of a nation. No coach catfish understands about the concept of death of a nation. We talked about coming out of Egypt and Babylon and all them things. Now, when I was a young man, I was understanding all this. And me and a few friends, we had talked about it. We were 17, 16 years old. We went out in the woods to a place where we call BFE. That stands for Bum Fucked Egypt. In other words, you're so far out, and no nobody know where you are. And we started a building on a cabin. This was back in 1978. We was already working on a cabin because we've been having concerns as we saw our friends and us drop out of high school and not have any bus school. All we have is some Vaseline, bend over, take it. And we didn't want to take it. So we moved out to BFE. And that's where I see the whole thing has been going. Just to let you know we started this young way off, and we saw something strange. And I just heard on the radio something about the removal of someone with a last name of some of my family. Starts with an L and ends with an E. That's some of my family E. And what I understand, I heard these people cheering and cheering about the loss of history. They stupid, stupid. I say, damn, that hurt my neck. But it makes them mad, they stupid. When you forget your history, you are doomed to repeat it. And you're doomed to have people lord it over you. Like a Nicolaitan. Don't you Bible people know what a Nicolaitan is? I guess you wouldn't because you ain't no Bible people. Anyway, 
It's disturbing. Disturbing to see all these people that want to get rid of the history that makes up humanity. And when you do that, what do you do? It means you are prone to go back and repeat. And that is where the money is at. It's in the repetition of insanity. Just go listen to Hannity and you'll understand the insanity. And that's what it does. Go to the bayou. Go to the woods. Where I live at, they call it the deer woods. I, I didn't know what to think about that when I moved up here. When we go to the woods, we just go to the woods. Up here they call it going to the deer woods. I'm not sure about what that means. But our woods was on the water. Just like your order. Well, you ought to all be. Go back to the bayou and find your sanity. I just wish I could. And if I could, I would. Anyway, I guess that's a message that I want to say. The sky's blue, the trees are green. And my God loves us all. As long as we do what he say. That's what you got to understand. It ain't free for all. You got to do what he say. Coach Capish. Sam. Same by you time. Same by you station. I still ain't figured out where I can look in the eye. Ah. Coach Gaffey's here to talk to you about something I just heard on the radio, on the airwaves. We know about the airwaves, the prince of the power of the air. We got all them people talking, talking a bunch of crap about a bunch of other crap. Well, that's what we got. Coach Gaffey is not unaware of how this stuff works. You gotta understand if I deal with it. I got two things, two things, two instrumentations of the machinations. One, the one. I use this one here. This one here tells me the angle, the dangle. And the dangle is not what you think. The dangle is that thing that's hanging in the center of your brain and takes over you and makes you competitive. All I got to know is the angle, the dangle. And put it in my head. Hold my hand that way. And it wastes. Now the second part. I know Coach Catfish hot. I've been out there working. Because I wake my ass off. Try to have some tame up. Make me boot. But the other secondary part of this is stopwatch. If you measure the angle of the dangle. You gotta have the stopwatch. <coughs> because at some point, you gotta have the stop watch. I don't know what that means. I just told say that. Like some people I know, I ain't really got no teeth. Because that's because I've been, ah, ah, I've been biting time. I've been biting time. Just like all my ancestors. We was time bandits. Ah, ah. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk to you about. We're here to talk to you about the way the wind blows, the politicking and all the dickens, and what they be doing to you. Got my grass hat on, because it's that time of year. Go out to the bayou, 
Yeah, I gotta have something cool on my head. It's got air conditioning in here. It's a three-ton unit I put up there to keep my brain from overheating. Of course, you got this. Got a hot brain. Because it don't have no rain. You see, anyway, what is it with these people? They think they can just take the measure. Oh, he pointing to the left. He pointing to the right. And somehow, we're supposed to know what any of that means? Because no matter what direction you point, you just keep ending up in hell. Don't you get that? Go to jail. Don't get out. Because you keep a checking the wind. The prince of the power of the air. That blows. These people. These people did it to me. They performed experiments. Damn it. Oh, shit. I gotta wipe that off. That's gross. That's gross. I hope I'm not messing up. Oh, there's a coin going. Okay, anyway, what it was is you think this. You can think of the left and the right. But when you look at it, you swing from this way to that way. Or this way to that way. Whichever the left or the right is, I'm confused. I'm biotoxic. And I'm philoxic, so I don't know what's left and right. I just know I want to go to the narrow gate. To the center of the way. Where the nature is where it is. That's why I got the grass hat. It's the nature hat. It ain't got no metallics in it. And when you ain't got no metallics in it, then you're the natural. You're the natural hat. And that's why I act. So I'm hearing already these people talking about you gotta look to the left, you gotta look to the right. You keep doing that and your head is going to unscrew. And what you can do with an unscrewed head? Because your body can't always find it when it falls off. I know. That's why I got this car here. It couldn't find it. Somebody had to pick it up and sew it back on. We buy you people. What do you think we do? Go to the, the hospital? No, no. No, no. No, no. I got to do this three times. If I don't do it three times... It makes me feel very uncomfortable. And I can't. What's that? Ooh, I think something bit me. Anyway, just prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Not for the left. No, no. I can't tell what, but you know what I mean. It splits you in between. And that's where the power is. It splits you. And it gets ya. That's why I gotta stay away from them old CRT. You ain't gonna give me CRT. Them, uh, CRT wave. Whatever the hell they is. I hear they tetra huts. And that tetra huts when they stick it where it shouldn't be. Where the sun don't shine. Give me a bottle of Vaseline. Anyway, so it's Catfish saying. Out of here, I just want you to know, I think the, the grass hat, wait for me, because I'm making sense tonight. I ain't going to use that name because it's so secular, and I'm not sure about being a child of the most high and acting secular, except trying to get people to wake up. Hallelujah. Uh, I ain't if you from the south is I D. Well, why am I here? 
Well, I had a little story. It's called One Step Beyond. One Step Beyond. Because when you go one step beyond, you step off the cliff. And there ain't no hieroglyph except to fall. To fall. And if you have any ability at all, it needs to be on your niece. Not your niece, you baby. I'm still having that trouble in my throat. I should understand. One step beyond. If you do any of them things, you be one step beyond where you should be at all. To make it perfectly clear, what do you need to survive? In a bad climate, what do you need? You need the air. You need the shelter. You need the water. You need the food. Who are you, dude? I think I done forgot. That's the point. One step beyond. Go skeptic. I gotta tell you about the story. And it goes like this. I'm from the bayou. I used to shoot my food and skin it out. I know where it come from. If I shoot that sucker, right in the eyeball. Well, he's eating a nut and barbecue him. That's my dinner. Well, I went to see my sister down in that hell hole towards the Galveston. Well, it is a Houston. I don't mean nothing bad about the people. They're good people. But it was a hell hole. And when I would go down there, everybody looked down on me because they knew I hunted and I giggled. And I run them trolley. And we sent them yo yo's. And I had nutria pelts that I would turn into my blankets and even other things that you do with birds. It's what you do if you understand the earth. So I come up to my sister's house. And the kids was around the table. There's three years old, seven years old, twelve years old, girl, boy, girl, or something like that. And what happened? His sister had cooked some stuff that come off some truck. He come around. It wasn't like a an ice cream truck, but he come around and swan. Oh, you had a bird, a bird that would have shot for eating a. Uh, Fish back in the bayou. Because that's what we do. We equalize what's necessary. But anyway, there was a swan thing come around. And you just get this stuff in packages. And you open it up. And open it up. And open it up. And the kids go, oh, I gotta get this one. I want that one. And it was all kind of prefabricated stuff. Well, Coach Catfish, you know me. I said, youngin. What is that stuff you eating? And they say, oh, it's, it's some chicken with some, with, with some carton de blue, whatever the hell that was. I would eat something that was blue. Blue used to mean bad. I wouldn't eat nothing that was blue. Anyway, all that stuff they do. And I say, where'd that come from? Well, it came from the truck. Uncle, Coach Catfish, it came from the truck. And I say, where the truck get it? Oh, we ain't thought that far. They never thought that they was eating that shit. Stuff that other people had to kill for them. The city folk. What is it with the city folk? I don't understand. They want to eat it. But they don't want their hand involved in ripping it apart. 
But that's the whole point. I say, youngins, do you not know you are eating bambi? Oh, no, no, oh, Coach Catfish, we can't be eating bambi. Oh, and my sister, she just lost her about the whole thing. And it was an uproar. And it went on for days that Uncle Robbie from the Bayou had said, you eating Bambi. I fed you some venison. I did that to my sister. When she come down, she didn't know she was eating squirrel. And then maybe even a little possum. No, I wouldn't have fed a possum. Had been unclean. But I fed her some deer and something else. I don't know what it would have been. But, but my friend would have helped in that area. Anyway. These children did not know they was eating dead shit. They was eating stuff that someone else had to take its life. What the kind of world do we live in? And this was 20 years ago. So can you imagine? Coach the catfish try to deal with this now. What these yarns? They don't know where the food comes from. One step beyond. When you don't know where the food comes from, then your ass is dead. In at least 33 days. Or something like that. And then the shelter. Out the skelter. You better know how to cut the limbs and, and hang stuff. And make you something that's warm. That's all Coach Catfish trying to explain. The bayou is full of life. It will take care of you. But the people out of the bayou, they on their own. They just in somebody else's home. Well, that was all I can say. We know how to take care. But them folks on the outside, why do they even dare? They won't go out and scratch up the earth. Of course, catfish go out and scratch up the earth. I'm going to have me some greens tonight. I ought to go get me some, some films of that so you can see them suckers. And I'll show you what I do in the morning. Because that's what it do. It make you poop. Eat them time. Greens. They just scour it out supposed to be. Help you think. Get them poisons out of your mind. Anyway, I don't know what else to say. I just looked on this hill and, and looked on this hill and I got the food, the water, the shelter. You gotta do what you gotta do. Just do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. I want to show you. I forgot. Here. This here with a Monica. The coach catfish got. The uh, catfish. Instead of having a skin, it's got the mum um, them them ups and downs. Uh it's not the mocking David. But that's what the scales is. It's a catfish. It's got scales. But the scales is made like the mocking David's, and I can't say that. Anyway, coach catfish. Just don't separate yourself one step beyond. It's a movie or a song of something back in them days. People like me can't remember. I can't see you. I can't look you in the eye. Just don't let it get no more than less than 1.1694 or something like that. The spiral steps beyond. Well... Oh, I... Coach Catfish here. 
that's a limited array for today. Again, I'm in my underclothed location because why I'm at, I'm so far out, I don't have to do a whole lot about the clothing. I can go out in my underclothing. Today, I'm looking for the iguana lizard. Oh, he's hanging on me still. I want his iguana energy. That's what it's all about. you got to get the iguana energy. Because the CRTs, whatever they did with the iguana, had to do with the iguana energy. I don't know which one gave it to which, but they seem to be on the same frequency. The same mode. Oh, he done, he done, took, oh, he done took off again when I say the same frequency. Did it freak them people out? Because they operate on the frequency. I didn't know the iguana did too. I guess that's why we all operate on the same frequency. I thought we'd get, get some of that iguana energy. Anyway, what we got going here today is the horn. We got the horn. We got the leaning horn. That woman did all that music. The leaning horn. She's the leaning horn woman. So all this here has to do with more talks about the pedagogy. Now the other 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 film I did, I talked about pedagogy because that's what I thought. I thought on the Bayou, that's what they did. The pedagogy. The ped when they talk about the education, they talk about the pedagogy. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was three. It's the pedagogy. The pedagogy. Let the goji a juice. It will get you on the loose. So when you got the pedagogy, you don't supercharge your feet with some kind of juice and you just run on what you're doing. No, no. Well, sorta, of, sorta, of. sorta. Of. I think that makes three times if you do it and you look at it just right. Anyway, what we're here talking about today is what was education about? And I think we might have left last time saying education was about reaching for something. The theology and the other natural philosopher, which covers the entirety of natural man and his environment. So the pedagogy was to prepare people to not only talk about, but to live out the finer things of the philosophics and the beauty and the hereafter and the moving on and why are we here today. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. That's why we got the Lena Horn. It's all about the arts and the pedagogy. She dark lady. Beautiful, beautiful dark lady. She was exceptional. She was intelligent. She studied. She did. That's why I got to lean a horn. I loved a woman. When I was a young man, I saw her and hear her, and it's like, oh my goodness gracious. Y'all done sent an angel to lean a horn. Beautiful woman. And we don't want to besmirch the concept of what it took to get there. And that's what I'll be talking about. The pedagogy. Why we start at a foundation? Why we practice? Why we got the rope? Why we do stuff to move up to the next level so we understand something else? It's why we had the math. Why we had to have the number sense. The sense to know when something is a half or something or it looks like two thirds or uh, 72 ninths. How, how do you figure that? Do I get one ninth something or how, how do I deal with any of this? And this is simple shit. If you had enough fingers and toes, you could count it out. But we're dealing with stuff that you can't do with your fingers and toes. You can do it right between your... I'm still having trouble seeing you. Right between your... Right between your ears. And all the way up to the horn. The horn have some St. Elmo's fire. I would not step out in this in a thunderstorm because i get struck by lightning. God say, you insane boy, what are you doing? Talk about the lean in the horn. No, no. We're talking about the finest of the arts. And why? We gotta have some good, consistent walking. The petter, the goji's. You feed them suckers that juice, the goji juice, in the, in the feet, and apparently it'll help you walk all the way around. 
That's what I get out of the woods. That's what I get out of the woods. That's what they tell me. That's what's on the commercials. Coach Catfish got to show it to you and express it in my own bayou-centric way. By taping stuff on my head as best I could, and that's the good tape. That is not the cheap tape that you, you tear, and it tapes, it tapes and you tears it off, and it tears wrong. This is the stuff that will probably pull my skin off my forehead. So I hope you have a good time thinking about that tonight. Anyway, what I want to say, the final thoughts of the pedagogy must have been beauty and order. Go back and look at the stuff. Go back and look at the stuff two, three thousand years ago. The beautiful artwork. The Davids, the the Goliaths, the whoever them people be that they be, be carving and carving and, and uh, Jimmy and Randy, whoever that was, carving their noses and stuff. And then you go look at the pharaohs four, five thousand years ago, and the symmetry is perfect. Who was teaching them? And we think they, they didn't even know the wheel, and everything they understood was about the wheel and about the ratios and about the mathematics. This stuff is old. Somebody pulling the wool over your head. Somebody taking your, your horn and straightening it up and, and just making you look, look, look strange and silly. Like when them, them kids on PBS, them, them weird things, and they have, they have this and that. And, 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 oh, the, oh, they're telling you, Tubbies. What the hell are they telling you? Why are you letting your children watch things like that? Why would you let your children watch things like me? I'm telling you the Tubbies. Anyway, we're going to talk about the Tubbies. That's a whole different subject. What we're talking about is proper understanding of nature and going through the stages and the steps of learning to become a functional creation that will bring more function and order to the creation. It's the same reason one plus one, which is two, equals one. You lower the energy and the disorder of the universe every time you turn out something that is orderly. Anyway, I'm going to talk about that. I want to show you what the old works. The old works. You seen the Mona Lisa? She been moaning. Ah! She been moaning, but she looks like she really moaning, Lisa. You want to talk about the moaning Lisa? But that's what she looked like. Go look at the picture. It's done by by, by an artist that was master. You know what he's doing? And it turned out good. Like this here. Oh. Oh. See that there? That's a young maven. A young maven. A young unshaven maven. A beautiful woman. Painted some time back in the day when beauty was important. He was. It was an important thing. Men didn't want to look at something ugly. I don't know about the women, but the men didn't want to look at nothing ugly. And this here. The Picasso. Was it Picasso or Picasso? I don't know what it was. Look at this here. You have to know all kind of uh, 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 mental, uh, men mental gymnastics to actually make any true uh, advanced meeting of the minds with such work. And which one do you think is pretty? This is uh, the beauty, young, a maven. There's a lot of time in between these people. These weren't no dumb people. These people knew what they was doing. So they was making ugly shit on purpose. Why would somebody do that? Oh, oh, oh. Maybe it's changed your mind about what you thought was beauty and what you thought was ugly. Maybe there is a distinction that is important. Maybe just meeting the ugly and just being a number, just being a six, is okay when it comes to carving something out of stone. Would you, would you like to see some of them beautiful things that was tens and elevens carved down to a five or a six? Well, you probably would, because we are in a race to the bottom, because our pedagogical walk ain't got the goji juice. You gotta have the right kind of juice to get the walk. Fix it. We can fix it. We can mix it. And that's all I was here to tell you. With the right kind of goji juice. The pedagogy. The right way of teaching. Humanity. And the whole world would be lifted. 
lifted in beauty. It wouldn't have to be some kind of thing we just sit around and think about and let the let the let the whole of reality go to hell. We participate in beauty and learn the rhetoric. So we could actually have a conversation in this nation or any nation on this planet. Some point. Both gonna have to sit down and deal with each other. Otherwise they're just gonna keep on doing what they do. It's a shame. The human being, the legumen, the cross between a, a being and a human, that's what we become. We lost our spirit in this time of year. When I say Miss Claus slap an ass, I realize whether you believe it or not, if something is about the salvation of humanity, why? Why would you be expressing and representing such a thing? unless it was designed to demoralize and tear down. I don't know. I think it might have leaned a horner. People that have beauty and perfection and tried and worked in a world that wasn't kind at the time, they left a mark. So I don't have my leaner horner. But I walk upright as I do it. Hallelujah. We gotta get to walking right. The pedagogy or the pedagogy. We gotta pedagogy. We gotta run to the education. We gotta run to the true knowledge that lifts up the whole planet of man. But it's a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous job. It's a dangerous path foundation if you're going to have the nation. Hallelujah. We're looking for that nation. Go Skeffish. Where are you? He jumped off my shoulder. I thought I would get some of that iguana energy. But that sucker jumped off. He done running. He done out the barn. I guess he headed for the bayou. Where I ought to be. Instead here talking. Talking to you. Why am I talking to you? What do you want to know about me? Who are you anyway? You don't know. Cause your head ain't covered. The CRT is working on your brain. That's what they call the brain food. But it's your brain that's being eaten on. You see. Go check this here. Talk to you about the proper Ganna. Not the proper goose. The song the loose. The proper Ganda. Like the Ganda. Had a little skinny man. He was strange, but he made a difference in the world. Because he knew propaganda. Now, what Coach Gary Fish is him. I've been trying to talk to people for years, years and years, about the concept of the grand native. Now, I don't know all the joggins and the nomenclatures in the subject, but I do know what I. And what I know is there's a narrative, and then people lie off their ass to you. And they do it over and over and over. And that Hitler the man, he say, or he gerbils. Them gerbils. We know what them gerbils do. They crawl up your ass and have fun. No, no. That was some Hollywood stuff. The gerbils. 
the man that formed the grand narrative. He made the proper Ganda. Not Gandhi. And not the goose. Because your goose get cooked if you fall in the propaganda. Now what I was here talking to you about was the fraud. The fraud. He was very annoyed at humanity. In fact, I don't think Freud liked humanity at all. I don't think he liked men, women, or anybody. They had flesh on their bones, especially if you look like him. Anyway, he says stuff that was very negative against the species and the intellect of humanity. And then, his grandma got busy. No, it wasn't his grandma. It was his sister, I think. Got busy with the cobbler. Got her a little one. And they call him uh, Bernays. And I don't mean mayonnaise. Even though he was so white man. White man with sort of short curly hair. He didn't have any beers like his grandpa. His grandpa looked much more academic. But what Bernays did is he talked to women's. The women folk, the womb man, and the smoking them cigarettes. I like that, Lord Kaiser. Oh, I stink. Oh, kiss me. I like that. Oh, that's what Benez, Edwin Benez. I guess they call him a little Eddie, a little Eddie B, a little Eddie, a little bastard. No, no, they didn't do that. I just said that myself because that's what I think. Anyway. He is sort of like the father, not the father, but one of the children of the propaganda that used the modern psychology of the schools of intellect to come in and take your ass and tie it up in knots, stick your ass in the matrix. That's where you headed. No, that's where you in. Thing is. Because Kathy's trying to say, pay attention, pay attention. Any man that would have such a desire to change your breakfast habits and did it successfully, along with a cigarette, had something going. I think he knew the stuff of the cement, the stuff of that old devil, the man with the horn is. <laughs> He'll sleep. That's where the propaganda come from. Now breakfast was changed by the bananas, along with the mayonnaise. And he got you people the eggs and bacon from his ad campaign that made you believe that that's what you're supposed to do. Well, guess what? That's what you haven't done today. That's what you haven't done today. Ain't nothing new under the, well, that is a new LED light. So there is something new under the LED light, but light is light. So there ain't nothing new under the light. Except for the darkness has learned how to propagate and associate light. And devolve you. Devolve you. Emotionally. You know, eat it. Just believe anything. Hell. You can't even change the time no more. No more. If you get out and don't have your phone, your connection to somebody, you lose your mind. Ah, ah, ah. What's wrong with you people? There's little people, little four year old people in Africa that takes the boats in every day and sells the fish from the night before. And you 40 years old and can't even can drive. What's wrong with you people? And you think it's going to go good from here? On your children? The Bernays man then spread the mayonnaise right heavily. And they're going to eat you up. <laughs> they're going to eat you for a people snack. So you better learn. Get your learn on. About the proper. Proper. And the psychology. Be just manipulating your ass. Just manipulating you. 
Just like that thing and go, ah, oh, that feel good. Ah, yeah, that's what you like. But that's why it's bad. Who told the young man he got to play football? Who told the young man that was his life? If you got to move that shit away. If you don't do it, then he a man. Propaganda. Who in the hell told you society was supposed to work the way it worked? Propaganda. It requires intellect, foundation, and a whole hell of a lot of humiliation. To get into this right, and the way we going, bro, hobo, whoever you are, I ain't doing that 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 stuff. The more hook 'em horns of the Texas. At least them people got something going for them, even if it is a devil. I didn't say that, did I? Anyway, it got to learn about the emotional state, the state of the mind. You must know who you are. Otherwise, they just gonna take your ass and stick you in a car and drag you off somewhere. Don't you know that? Can't you feel that in your bones, in your womb? I know it, dude. You gotta think for yourself. You can't be like a Santa's elf. Because we know what them things is. They's down there in hell. Hell, I say. They not in the North Pole. That's what God is. Anti-God. Hell. And he's a man that pins the propaganda to you. And Kosha Catfish caught on it early. I'm still trying to look in the eyes, and I can't. But my fingers are... Oh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm getting a little carried away. Because I'm very concerned. Very concerned. About my public. Because I love it. Now, I, I grew up in Lubbock for a little while. And then on the Air Force Base, I think they did experiments to me. Anyway, I'm not real sure. I got the semi shock fin today. Because you got to have a little bullshit when you're cutting through the bullshit. You're going to get some on you. So I lowered, I lowered the fin. And I changed my angle to be about 33 degrees above the equator and the alligator. Anyway, I got more about this stuff. And I want you to laugh at me. Laugh your ass off at me. Do your homework. Because I just go scavish. And I got to do something about that glare on my nose and my face because it makes me look funny. I didn't want that at all. I just don't have the money for lighting. And I the show as hell can't do much in the way of fighting. So this is just one in a long line. Bullshit. Bullshit to help you cut through. Cut through. Slice it. Dice it. Mm. I come at you like a tyrannosaurus. And I'm very sore for doing it. Anyway, so Skeffish, I'm heading to the bayou. Gotta get my turn em up on. Go do me something gigging. And shock some of them CRTs. Cause they getting it you and they getting it me. We're gonna smash that sucker. It's a green eye monster. I still can't rhyme with that. So I'm just leaving. I stay in bad thing with my hands. I don't understand why I do it. It's just, it's automatic.
Hey, you. How am I? I'm here. Been telling you, Coach Catfish is stupid. And I was told I need to come clean about my comorbidity and my stupidity. And it go like this. You hear the rough of greens. The rough of greens for the dogs. There's something they've been offering to get some rough greens for your dogs. Ugh. Coach Catfish didn't think of it that way. I'm always telling you that you tie them up. They scours you out to your pooping place. You know, they, they do that. They scours them out because that's what the greens do. So I thought they were saying that the rough greens for the dog was rough and it scours inside out. Like it does us. Get all the poisons and stuff out. And then I realized in my head, my dog goes, woof, woof. I never understood that the rough greens was because they dog goes rough, rough. Now you see why a comorbidity and stupidity should count as one thing. In a little box where they check it off about this person, part of his problems. Or her problems. Well, I had another one. When I was at the co-op, I was looking up there and I saw Rick. The wood. $65. I asked some people about it. I said, yeah, yeah, that Rick, he, he got the wood. He got the wood, the wood's there. It's a Rick. And I spoke up and say, I've known quite a few Ricks around here. Where we live, there's lots of Ricks and Richards and Dicks. I guess all that stuff just going to go together. And they say, no, Coach Catfish. It's $65 a Rick. His name is not Rick. Coach Catfish, it felt like a fool. I just laughed and said, yeah, yeah. I just joking. I didn't tell him that. I just turned around and realized, again, stupidity is a comorbidity. And somebody ought to give you money for it that makes you like me. He, he, he. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> anyway, Coach Catfish here. <coughs> I am three times. If I do it three times, it's okay. Anyway, I'm here to talk about you. Not to talk about you. To talk about you. And what you be doing in this season of the reason. And the reason i be talking about it is because a pussycat. I don't know what the pussycat is wanting except for me to spend all my time with the pussycat. The pussycats have turned against me in a weird kind of way. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the reason for the season. The Highland Winnie. I'm not sure exactly what these people be talking about. About the Highland Winnie. Why are they howling the weenie? We got cults and churches that do that already. Oh. Is it that simple? No, 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 no. That's not what the howling weenie is all about at all. Now, I'm really not sure what it's about. But what I figured is anything that's got them pussycats going. <laughs> and, 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 and witches with them uh, pointed hats. Flying around on their brooms instead of using them to sweep out the corridors 
of of of, of the Capitol or wherever they should be working instead of being witches. They need some switches. So what? And the pumpkins? What's the pumpkin? You take a pumpkin and you turn him into a soup or a pie. Why the hell are they sticking a candle in the pumpkin and making him make that? Ah! Who would do that? Evil people. Evil people. Unfortunately, the evil in the bayou has a long, long history. And it is a mystery. That's why I treat it like the hallowed weenie. And what I'm going to do, since I'm Coach Catfish, I can't be eating no regular weenie. It's got the pig and whatever the hell it's got. As long as it's just cow lips and cow pots, it's good. It'd be a, a Hebraically inspired weenie. So what is this whole thing about the hallowed weenie? And I ain't really understood if it's just the hallowed weenie or the hallowed weenie. Are we praising the weenie? Are we drilling a hole in him, injecting some cheese, heating him up and eating him? Like a weenie snack. I, I, I. That's what I think it ought to be. I just don't understand. Because Catfish already wears costume. He is a costume within himself. So I don't understand why people want to go put on costumes if they don't really look this way. If you're not a freak, why would you want to look like one? I just can't answer that question. I'm not a freak. I just look like one. So I don't understand the Howlett Winnie. I do understand the Pusscat down here. Saying, Daddy Coach Catfish, why are you talking this way? And I say, Pusscat, they got you represented as like going, Argh! being black cats. And I got black and white cats. I got the Illumin, Illumin Toddy Cats. You know, just a little bit of rum and coke on the cat. I show you. Come here, Pusscat. Come here. Oh, oh. See, I got the black and the white. <sighs> that puss cat ain't no witch. That puss cat is not used as a medium. It is not a familiar. It's just a familiar pussy cat. That's all it is. So why we gotta come up with all this architecture of lies and stupidity? Because stupidity should be an official comorbidity. It should. I know. You, oh, oh, that, that, you stop that. I take my knife to you, Puss Cat. Puss Cat don't understand, Coach Catfish. Not, not playing around. Oh, if I can just get it out of my holster. I'd be like the Barney Fife. Ugh. The Barney Fife of the knife. Yeah. I got that for the Howlett Winnie. I'm going to take him in and do some good singing on his... <laughs> That'd be the Howlett Winnie. And I might just consume him right here and there. Cook him up like some crawfish. Some mud bug, which I ain't had in years. Because since I coached catfish, can't eat the mud bug. But that's not why we're here. We want to talk about the Howlett Winnie. Is there more to say about the Howlett Winnie? I think this whole nation is a Howlett bunch of weenies. Anyway. That's just my opinion. And my hand won't stop doing that. It just keeps talking for me. I don't know why. I don't know why. But the Pusscat. Pusscat be black and white. Good cop, bad cop. It all works to the same. But if you really want to keep it real, just go eat the Howlett Winnie in between some buns. And I don't even want to think about that because that don't sound all that good. Anyway, you hear what I'm dealing with. The puss cat needs me. Anyway, I'm going to come and howl it out one of them weenies, inject it with cheese, and eat it right here. Because that's how I feel about the howled weenie. Hallelujah. I know where my matzo's buttered.
Ah, ye. Oh, Coach Catfish, coming to you, because I got triggered. Triggered, I say. You know, like that, that man's horse. I smell like a horse. You know, trigger. Anyway, what happened to me? And I was looking on the tube, the U-tube, and what I saw was a thousand horsepower Mustang racing an electric car. And it tricked me. I do that every time I think about it. Because I understand the horse power. The number of horsepower and watts and kilowatts. 750 watts. As it is communicated, is dealing with a rational expression of horsepower. The ability to do what? To lift the pounds. In this case, We'd be pushing a car. And what I saw was the old electric car. Barely, barely, I say barely, beat this other car. And it had nothing to do with the acceleration. But it had to do with the acceleration. What happens when you start dealing with complex mechanics and things that are not linear? And that's what happens when you're dealing with all thousand horsepower cars. See, I can't hardly say it, because I want one myself. Well, Coach Catfish grew up working on motors and engines and things that move and transform one type of energy into another type of energy and the movement of power through a system I grew up working on the chainsaws and the lawnmowers and all that stuff. And that's part of why I grew up to get my education and know how things work, about pressures and about using all the geometries and trigonometries and all that stuff that makes the engine do what it do. You put some 10,000 horsepower in there and stick it on that track. And it would just take that electric car and eat it, eat it all up. But the amount of work required to do that is amazing. And old Coach Catfish, because I was a teacher, and I try to teach, and I'm very concerned about the human brain and the lack of rain and why we got to drain the swamp of our good people. They would have had an opportunity. But you're trying to teach them about unity. And unity ain't always possible. But that's another video. Anyway. What I'm trying to say. Is once we move to electric car. Then there ain't much you can actually go in and do. And change it. And, and learn about it. And work on it. I understand because I did the electronics too. You know that design, illustration. I was back there when the MOSFETs come in. And buddy, you could lay down some current in a MOSFET. And it had these wonderful characteristics. The P's and the Q's was minded. But, I cut my teeth on the internal combustion. I cut my teeth. I ain't got any teeth. But I cut them. I guess that's where they went. I chewing, chewing them lug nuts off. <laughs> no, I'm just joking with you. Coach Catfish is trying to be serious because my concern is when we change the technology and get rid of a completely useful, useful understanding, useful idea that teaches young people how to think critically and how to think through the mechanics because an engine is very, very complex. And it helped me understand why you got to know what you got to know. Back on the 9-11, I was teaching at a government facility. And there was hostility. We didn't even know if we was going home. And the next day when I had to come to wait, I taught them youngers about building missile silos. And I got them to go through and use a geometry 
and use the trigonometry and use the algebra to do things and, and, and dig holes and how many trucks and, and, and the surface area and the volumes. And they did it and they enjoyed it because they were doing something. Now that's what I'm afraid we're going to miss when we get rid of the internal combustion. It's a wonderful process. And then you get to the chemistry and you get to all the electronics and the control. It is one of the most complicated and infiltrated creature on the face of this earth. And I hate to see it go. There's so many good people that work on the motor and know how to use the power. But I tell you, I tell you now, when you get to the electric, there just ain't a whole lot of stuff you can do. It's sort of locked in to the technology. But the mechanics is not locked into the technology. It's only locked in to the imagination. And that's what was so good about the NHRA, I think, nation. I grew up on them V8s, that stuff there, and them 671, and them 871, and them 1271, long before the fuel injection was part of the election. And buddy, I learned some stuff, and I made money on it, and I helped make a better way of looking at the world because I understood the complexity of the mechanics and that's what the human brain is made for. If you just sit there and play games and shit, all you're doing is putting the brakes on. You're not involved. You just devolved into somebody else's bullshit nightmare. Get out and do something. Scratch the ground. Work on some old lawnmowers. Do something that makes your brain hurt. Get out and scratch the date. Hallelujah. Coach Camp is here. A day after all oh, that stuff expanded in my brain. The mushroom. No, that's a joke. Remember, it, it did not work. Science at work. Mr. Wizard, I gotta eat a body of your gizzard. Cause your stuff didn't work. We tried. Coach Catfish is here. Talk to you about something else completely different. Completely different. And I'll see if I can't make my voice a little completely different to show you, to explain the complete difference of this completely different today. And I think the science will explain why I got the underwears on my head. Well, what it was is we've been working. We've been working with all them head and brain covers. We've been using four. The four. It ain't like oil. It's four. But it's metallic. And reflect and create various circumstances on them uh, EMF waves, them CRT waves, as they come in. You see, as they come in, well, we won't even go there because I don't know if you done had the EM to ex understand. What be going on in the metal? Anyway, that's what it was. It's a metal. Aluminum. We done used the metal. Why? Don't you remember the the flying un? The flying un story? That's what we was using. And it's still metal. It conducts away, reflects, and allows the CRT stuff to not enter your brain, as you see. Because today I haven't made Hard time making sense. And I'll tell you why. Okay, that's the other one. Can't find the non mosquito net. I don't know where it is. And anyway, the lunch is still out on that one. 
for what we did. I was thinking, because get this, what's been the same and what's been different to your science, the same and difference has been the same. I've been covering up my skull, covering up my, well, all the life goes on, right? Yeah. Been covering it up. The other thing the same was it's been metallic. So I say, oh, I've been hearing something, hearing something about Giza, the cottons, the non-metallics. And I say, well, why not just try some of that? Put that on my head without the metal and you'll see where it go. Well, I think you see where it go. I'm having trouble putting two thoughts together. I feel like somebody just been been like uh, just walked out of a cave and I ain't sure what's going on. But I'm still trying because I want the science to be empathetic. What is that? I'm not even sure. Oh, that. now you see it. Now you don't. Ooh, now you see it. No, now you don't see it. It looks like it's covered up. I think there's some kind of weird magic going on here with this. It's cotton. I don't know if it's real Giza cotton, but I think it's from somewhere. Maybe from that old South. Maybe, maybe, maybe they got slave labor down there making them, them underwears. Out of cotton. Oh, down there where they doing all that what? Growing that stuff. You hear my belly growl. See, I think it's very bad to put this cotton on your head. I think you need to teach the metallic. I'm having trouble with my words all the way around. And I'm going to lay it off all on trying to keep them CRT waves out of my head with the geese of cotton. I think it'd be rotten. Now I feel much better. The sky is blue. The trees are green. And I got a damn peacock sitting out there. Let me see if we can turn it around here. Ooh. Peacock, show yourself. He out there, I promise. The peacock out there. I'm gonna throw these underwears into the grab bag where I can grab them and wipe something off. I don't know who I look like, but it just looks strange. Anyway, I got to go. The goat's gotta be milked, and the camel's gotta be built. And I'll be saying, bye bye. Miss American Pie. I'm thinking of something else, but I just think it pissed people off even worse. Let's go scatfish. Sign it out. Instead of the I, I should be saying the I, yeah. He keeps it talking about the common good. The common good. When you think about the common good, should it not be good for every man? Should it not be good for every man? Oh, yeah. That sound real good until you really start understanding what common good mean. I looks at myself and I say, I's less than common. I was just coming on from the backside somewhere. I don't know. I was less than common. But for the most part, when you look at the curve, most people in the common. The common. Well, something between the Greek and the streak and the understand of the Teho and the Tame. That's the difference. You don't know the Teho, the Tame. Then you just go right along with that old common good because it sounds good for everybody. 
what is good, what is coming, things coming, I'm not fit for the temple, things coming, I'm not fit for the sacrifice, for the sacrifice of what you had. That's where we go so wrong. We start thinking about the common good. It's just good for everybody. It's just good for everybody. The 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 the, the past of hell is, is broad. It's got lots of stones in it. Hewn stones, bricks, mortar. All that stuff made by the hand. And the chiseling of the hammer. And I got something else around here. But I won't even pull it out to show you how to cut what I be cutting. Cutting by the hands of man. That's a common good. Coach Catfish here to tell you that that is not what is useful. Once you start mixing with the Greek with the foundations of Hebrew, you end up with a gobbledygook with a mash, and you just be doing all kinds of stuff. Babble, babble, babble. Give me that tower. I'll climb that tower to babble. And that's where you go. Even if you don't know. So what you got to understand. It's not the common good. Because common. Is not acceptable. On the altar. Of your sacrifice. Or your sacrifice. It must be. Clean. It must be without blemish. And if you ain't Flemish, you may not understand my language. But I don't know anybody Flemish anyway, so I'm just talking something I'm not sure. No, no. No, no. Coach Catfish, no, what are you talking? The sacrifice is not coming. So the common good is like the man with the orange hair. He got out of a bottle. <laughs> You can't have a bottle. In the spirits, they come in, they hit, and they come out of your mouth. They lie to you. They lie to you. Anyway, I guess what I hear to talk about was the common good ain't always good, except for what's common. And we're supposed to be a special bride. A special bride. Not coming. I ain't here talking about my opinion. I here talking about the word. What the word say. You're not coming. So be careful what comes out of your mouth. Coach Catfish been saying a lot of stuff coming out of his mouth. But it has been for effect. Because my concern about the brothers. They just they just want to practice something. I'm going to practice it like basketball. And faithfulness is not basketball. Because more people are faithful to basketball than they are to Yahweh. So get away. That's what's apt. It's a narrow gate. Very narrow. Very narrow. Very narrow. Not the big gate. And that's where the bride of the proverbs be sitting. She ain't a hidden the pipe or none of that stuff. She doing what the master would expect. Like the arrow hit her to his target. That's why we got to have the brides. For us coarse men. We take a hammer to everything. Mm, mm, mm. But the women's, they took a stage a hammer and go, Oh, Coach Catfish, you hit right here. Right here, Coach Catfish. Not beat the hell out of it. That's what men do. That's why we got to have a bride. And then we become brides. Not in the wide gate, but in the narrow gate. Gate you can't even see through. It takes years to get through there. The wide gate you flow through like an ocean. 
But the real God gate, you're going to squeeze through there like you're a two-dimensional object. And that's what grace and that's what faithfulness brings about. It's perfecting Affecting of the woman. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. How are you? It's a very good day. Because I'm here to talk to you. I got something good really to talk about. Now, normally, I don't get into no politics. I stay away from all that stuff. I just stay out of the bayou, you know. We got our own politics out there. We know how to deal with stuff. And we got to deal with it. Now, before I go too far, I want to show you. A little something different. I'm in my colors. My colors. The colors that make me think. Green to gray. Get my colors, man. I don't know what I was thinking with all that red and blue. That's not me. That's not me at all. I'm the camo. I am the... I am the coach catfish. Coach catfish can be having no red and blue. They like to hang out up in the bushes. And that's what I got. I didn't like being called Captain Red anyway. I am the coach catfish. One thing though, I decided to incorporate the top knot onto the mosquito net. And I think I'm getting new stations. I'm hearing something all the way from down there. Down there is the Zydeco. Doo -doo -doo. And they're playing that, playing that old squeeze boxing. Yeah, the Zydeco. So I say I'm gonna stick with the mosquito net and the top knot. But that's not what we're here to talk about at all. We're here to talk about the main usage of them old CRTs. And it all has to do with that last man that was in that big old oil house. There was some color associated with us. Anyway, whatever it was, he had the orange hair. And I know about the orange hair because I used to have that too. I want to tell you how I got it. And if that's how he got his, then it is illegitimate orange hair. When I was a little boy. My cousin say, come over here, boy. I'm going to put something on your head so you look like me. Like, why you want me to look like you, girl, cuz? She had the brown hair, sort of. Them strawberry brown. And she put this stuff called the sun in. She put the sun on her head. Like the, like, like the yellow, the sun. And it turned her hair like that blonde. Because she wanted to be blonde back in, back in the day, or blonde. And I'm like, okay. I have old dark hair, dark eyes, so I got to be different, too. I come over, she said, put that stuff on your head. I thought, what would my mama say? Well, since I didn't have mama a lot, it didn't make a whole lot of difference. My cousin was nice to me, and she had the sun in, and I want some sun in my head. She started putting that stuff on me. I said, now, boy, go sit out there. Sit out in that sun. I sat there nearly all day. Then she said, Oh, oh, what happened to your hair, boy? It's orange. Well, what you didn't know is some of that sun in will turn certain people hair colors orange. And instead of getting it to the good old, the good old California girl look, that's what it's going for, the California girl look. My mom was very upset because I had the orange hair. Now, if that's where Trump, that man, oh, I said her name, I said her Whenever I say that name, I gotta go. Now, who would that I say? I know he's the man with the orange hair, but what? Who was he? Anyway, get back to my story. The orange come out of a bottle. 
The orange is not natural. And the orange did do nothing but cause ridicule. People ridiculed me about the orange. It was something I couldn't do. I say, my girl cousin put that on my head. That's when we started putting a chapeau on me. To hide the orange. So I think the orange was a mistake. And I think it came out of a bottle. Just like mine. Them lying suckers on them CRTs. And that sucker was on every day. Every night. People lost their mind over him. Thank goodness the orange, the orange has faded. I think I'm gonna get me now. I was up hunting them yo-yos all night last night. That's three times or two. That's three. You see, Coach Catfish done earn his wings. No, 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 no. What I actually did, in every yell, those CRTs, they lose their wings. They shed them like a deer sheds his. Anyways. So what I did is I tried to stick this into my neck and some of that wire and stuff that stuck in there. All them screws, they got to be good for something. I thought they would hold these things on, but they don't. They just fall off, fall backwards. Anyway, just what happened to you when you fall way too far from the logic. You know, shit to make sense. The logic. Let me let me get these things off. They they're heavy. They made out of the same material as those CRT, which will make an appearance today. I don't think he's got his new no, his new wings ain't quite sprouted yet. Uh, excuse me. Bow throat. Give me fits. I might choke a lot today, but that's okay. I started out with a little choking. Uh, uh, that thing's heavy. Anyway, what Coach McCaffrey's here to talk to you about today is my new style of keeping them CRT out. The CRT, the time of year are much more pointed and powerful and they out for something altogether different than they are during the rest of the year. This is the time of the year that those CRT is out to attack the Jesus. That's what they do. I know because I saw some lewd acts that Miss Santa or one of her elves was doing on TV. She's slapping her ass. Ah, 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 ah. You know, yeah, slap that ass. It's all getting red. I already had red pants on but it's getting real red. And that's what they do to the baby Jesus. This is this time of the year, and the reason all that stuff takes place and happens is because of the CRT. You don't protect yourself. I protect me. Who do you protect? Do you protect your family? Now, what this here is, is instead of having a capacitor, I made a reverse capacitor. I got me these two things here. This here hat's one of them hats that sucks all the water out of your head. And hot and all that good stuff. And I got one of the hats for the cold. So there's some, some more resistors. There's resistors on a very sudden kind of day. You could get them to attract charge and be displaced throughout the entire surface of the resistor. But that's not what we're here to talk about. I'm not here to get a, <coughs> excuse me, an unmedicated physics lesson. What you're here to understand is I stuck this here in between the two insulators. So I would hopefully, hopefully, I don't know what that was, conduct some of them CRTs away from my head so I can have a good talk. And the whole eye thing. I saw a movie here recently with a guy, he 
he covered his eye, and then when things would get to a certain way, he'd open his eye, and, uh, and he'd cover it back up, he'd shoot out a beam or something. I don't think that'll actually happen. But I just thought I'd see if, if, if it would work and look a bit more sophisticated. So Coach Catfish got to talk to you about sophistication. You got to do the sophistication. You must be sophisticated. How can you be out in the world, act all intelligent, and not be sophisticated? You see, today I'm not doing that. I'd be doing this. Because I think that's what all this stuff here is about. It's been all sophisticated. But if you're not sophisticated, this is where it can lead to. Do you want a coach catfish living by you? Do you want a man like this living by you? Well, if you don't, then you need to start having families and sending your children to school in the proper way so they learn not to end up like this. You see, it's just so simple. I guess I am just, I'm just an illusion. An illusion, not an illusion, an illusion. As to what happens to humanity, when they education and stuff is all down up night. Or something like that. So that's what we're here to talk to you about. Trifidium. And the avidium. Oh, no, that's a quadridium. The vidium was... The vidium was the video. The video did I want. No, it, it wasn't any of that. I don't know what it was. But we're here to talk to you about the education. The education. A little. Rugrats. Curtain climbers. And things you pop out every nine months. They, they, they grow up and lower their name, and then they, 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 they go out and commit crimes and do all kind of weird stuff. It's your fault. It's your fault. You did not provide the foundation. Without a foundation, you have nothing but humiliation. And that's what we here to talk about. Let me see if my notes will help me any. Ah, not getting around too good today. You have to excuse me. I was having a pedagogical talk. No, pedagogical talk. That sounds sexual, but I don't think it is. I don't think it has anything to do with your foot. But what I think you do have to do with is to walk. The walk. The pedagogy. The process of educating and passing on information in a constructive and useful way. So the next generation can do something instead of be foes. So that's what we're here to talk about. Just the word in general. I'll tell you what I hear. What I hear in it. The pedagogy. The ped is the foot. What does the foot do? Now this is the way a little Hebrew would look at it, I think. I think. Therefore, I'm doing something. Anyway, the ped, the foot, the walk. And the agagi. I don't know what to say about that one. But the pad part, I'm assuming that it has to do with your walk. So maybe what we are doing in the pedagogy is teaching people how to walk and walk properly. Just because you can walk don't mean you can walk properly. Just because you walk don't mean you're not going to fall, hit your toes, break stuff, and all kind of stuff happen. The thing is, if you got some foundation to the walk, then some of that stuff won't be quite so miserable and catastrophic when it happens. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. The pedagogy. The pedagogy. Now, what I think is interesting, went back and looked at the history of all this stuff, you know, and come to find out, did you know that is a way to educate people? We have known how to educate people for thousands of years. We have done it throughout history. So what the hell's happening now? Why is it we take a perfectly 3,000, 4,000 year old type of human science and turn it upside down? We have seen the proper pedagogical association and all that stuff work. It's what the Renaissance was made out of. It is what tamed and calmed the world. It teaches you how to think. To walk right, you've got to think a little bit. That's what it's about. Even my Messiah. The way, the walk. He's talking about the walk all the time. Having a light to the feet, the light to the feet to the walk. If you're a smart person walk out in the world of darkness, you will have a light to your feet. It is a... It's a word I can't think of, but it's sort of an illusionary thing. It's another 
type of literary word, but, but you know, it means something, but it means something. And, you know, you, you people, you're not that stupid, are you? You know, like old Coach Catfish. Anyway, what we're saying, if you got the right walk, then you don't have so many useless eaters. When you got the useless eaters, then you got a bunch of useless peters. And that gets you in all kinds of trouble. It has in the past, and it's going to in the future. And what's so interesting about going back and seeing the way education brought this whole entire planet up is it can do it with anybody. You don't have to be a color. You probably don't even have to have eyes and ears because humans can take in information in so many ways, so many ways. You cut one thing off and a human will learn how to use something else. That's just the way we are. It's what's got us here. But then, why do we throw all this out? When you are a child, you must learn the things of a child. Now children, and I was one of them children. I was, I was put in that situation of, who you want to live with this year? You know, I was a five, six, year, seven year old kid. Who you want to live with this year? Now assholes couldn't, couldn't make the decision on their own, so they put on a child. And you see what that do to them. You do it every day and you know it. Stop it. Stop it. I get loud sometimes. It's a passionate subject. It's fucking people up. It's very passionate to me. Why do you do it? There's a systematic way of teaching. You teach people to think. It has steps. It has rote. It is very necessary, if you want to learn math, to do the math. Math is necessary because it teaches you the concept of numbering. If you can't count, then you just be taken advantage of all your life. And that's what happens. That's what happens. The numbering system. The numbers teach you all kind of stuff. And if you turn young people loose in the world, you don't have a number sense. I know, I know this. I teach this stuff. I used to teach this math. And, I, and nowadays... The young ones just cannot absorb because they have not been taught from early. They have not done rote. They think they have the idea. And they got the idea of the calculus. They got the idea of the physics. They got the idea of, of how the world works. But all they've been doing is just, 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 just watching TV. This is how the world works. Watch Nova. Nova will teach you how the world works. Government funded programs teaching you anything. That's what we're here to talk about. That's what we hear about. Children is not being taught in a fashion that does anything but confuse them. It turns them into little, I don't know what it turns them into, but I tell you what, I feel for these youngins. I feel for them. When you're brought into a world and you're not taught to rhetoric, you're not taught to language, you're not taught to numbers, then that means anybody can come along and tell you anything and you will believe it. There's living proof. It happens every day. I see it. The CRT. Somehow, you got to figure out how to eliminate some of that disturbance coming in your head. It comes in the tube. And now, of course, we don't have a tube. we got flat screen stuff. The chickens are going crazy because they, they're concerned about me when I start talking this passionate way. you got to limit yourself. If you have a deficit in some area, go back and learn something. I guess this is just way too much to handle at one time. So maybe I'll do something else about it. I don't know. But what I try and tell you is you got to keep the CRT out. And there is a functional way to learn. And it's not being done. You can actually go and find out about this in various places on the Internet. About what education and about what history really does. What it means. Because you don't want a bunch of me running around, do you? I just want to go to Bayou. I just want to go hide up in Cypress Street if I could. That's all I would do. I would just go out to the bayou, hide up in the Cypress Tree, and take care of them CRTs when they come in. You know, you know me. You've seen it happen before. Anyway, it's just stuff that's just disturbing, disturbing, and it's hard to know how to put this stuff in words. There's a man that I think a lot of. I appreciate his intellect. His name is James Lindsay. He can... He can explain this stuff a lot better than me. It'll make a lot more sense. That's okay. We say the same thing. Even if it's coming from, Oh, Coach Catfish? You believe him more because he don't look like a fool. Don't act like a fool. He act like a real man. And then there, oh, 
Uh, the boy had the tattoo monkey. Tattoo monkey make a lot of sense. Go listen to some of these people. They're kind people. They may not believe all you believe. They don't believe all I believe. But they're kind people that talk some sense. And it's free to watch them. Anyway, go coach catfish. Wishing everyone a wonderful, wonderful, whatever it was you be doing. Whatever it was you be doing. We just waiting. And just waiting. And waiting our turn. We wait for our Messiah. For our Messiah. We want our disinsanity. Can't get to the bayou, so I'll just have to wait for him to beam me up. Anyway, Coach Catfish, sign in out. Same bayou time, maybe in a, another bayou station. Hallelujah. Coach Catfish here. How are you today? Hey, hey, hey. I'm here to talk to you about the air mule, the horse. The horse is a horse. Of course, of course. Until he ain't a horse no more. Because he don't exist. He has no use. No uses for the horses. He was replaced by the autocycle and the two-stroke, and the turbine engine, as well as batteries. The most you people understand that we had electric cars before we had the auto cycle running around. We had electric cars back in the 1800s. People don't realize that. They want to put it on somebody else today. Hey, hey, hey. But we're here to talk about the horse. It's a horse. Of course, of course. And you have to excuse my background. It's warm in the kitchen, so that's where we hang all the, the laundry. Because it's too cold to mess with the laundry outside at night. So, that's where it is. The horse. It's a horse. Of course, of course. Look at yourself. You know what? You are the horse. Use the modern horse. Use the horse of the brain trust. Use the horse that made everything work. When the human was the horse. Now we look around. The only time we see the horse is in the circus, at the zoo, in somebody's backyard, or being set upon by a cowboy or cowgirl. No, Pusscat. The Pusscat is wanting my attention, but I'm not going to give it to the Pusscat because we're talking about the horse. And now, that's where you see the horse. The horse is a reverenced creature. Because there ain't that many of them, except on the plains where they want to push them off the cliffs and stuff. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the parallel of the human brain, the average man, and the horse. Now, back in the day, the horse... You hook him up to something, he just clop along, clop along. You didn't have to have a smart horse to do that. You have a race horse, you got a special breed of horse. They race and race and race and race. Guess what? That's why we have with the humans. The regular people, they go along, go along, do their job, and then go out there and fish in the bayou, do what they need to, just just, just have a 9595. Nine, then you had the other class people. They go out and they build and stuff, and they build and stuff. Then you got the other folks, they's up in the Ivory Towers, thinking up stuff, how to do evil evil things and that's what happened to the horse the evil thing was the internal combustion engine the various cycles internally externally and the turbinally cycles that's what happened to the horse i saw nobody 
crying about the horse. I don't know what the cat up to. I don't trust him all the time because he's a very large cat. Yes. No, oh, don't tell them. I'd get the swatter to the cat. Anyway, he didn't got me off my, my game. The horse again. The horse was so much. Everyone had a horse. Every man, and some people had many horses. Horses that did very specific and special things. Like you had the horses with the big feet, the gigantic 2,000 pound ton, ton plus horses, the Clydesdales. And then you had the cutting horses. And then you had the little Han horses. And you just had all these horses and horses everywhere. Now, where are the horses? There's horses, of course. So where's the horses? Well, I guess what I was trying to say is the human being. It's the same place that the horse was a hundred years ago, 150 years. He's been replaced by the artificial, I do what you say, human, uh, non-human thing. So my concern is, is a human being, as he is, then go by the wayside like the horse. Just trot off into the sunset, disappear. That's my concern. Because when the human brain is not used for what it's supposed to be used for, it disappears. Boop. Boop. It leaves the reality of the universe. And the horse, when not used for what it's used for, they feed it to the dogs and cats and stuff. We don't want no soil and green people. Anyway, it was just a concern I had to go coach catfish, thinking too much. I didn't put the pan on my head till a while ago. CRTs was coming in. I know they just put up another one in places down the road. So they got the extra CRTs. And I don't know who they're aiming at, what they're doing with them. But they come in, they come in. And I was watching it on Old Western. Coach Catfish trying to stay away from all that stuff. But every once in a while I catch something. And I like the Old Westerns. I still appreciate that. People are just shooting each other with the guns and, you know, robbing the banks and all and what they do and what they do. Anyway, that was supposed to be a kind of gentler world, even though it was not real. They lied about all that stuff. People wasn't doing all that. They weren't all them gun fights and stuff. But anyway, it's the same way the horse. The horse going to go. Of course, of course. And my concern is that the average man will not be able to take care of the average pusscat. My pusscat is not average. He's a big brown pusscat. So who will take care of him when they have no need for the brain trust of the human being? The legumen. A legume is a human being. Or something like that. Can't they genetically cross us and have a, the, the legumen human? Anyway, just don't want to be like the horse and be left on the side to be fed to the cats and the dogs and whatever else they do with horse. My grandma brought some home one time. Back at the end of Louisiana, she worked at the store. Someone had brought in the horse meat. It was back in the late 60s, early 70s. She cooked it up, cooked it up. It was very coarse. It was red. It almost reminded you of some kind of salted, uh, whatever that stuff is, they salted down. It's very coarse, very tough. We don't eat the horse. The horse is just pets. We ride them. We work them. We use them for what they're created for. It's created for a purpose. So was you. Go find your purpose. Go out and do something. Get busy. Get busy on the earth. It needs you. Who do you think the folks should take care of the earth if it ain't you? You silly human. The earth needs you. I don't know why I'm saying that, but it just sounds like something that new agents want to hear. Anyway, me and my pussycats fixing to do some grunting on the violin so I can do some gator grunting. Call up them gators at night. Uh, 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 uh. I'll be showing you. I'll be playing the gator grunting with the pussycat. In my backup.